Hello everyone, in this video we'll be looking at graph state variables and the various ways you can use them to control what happens in your scene. You may be wondering why we are looking at graph state variables in a cell video. Well that's a good question and all will be revealed later on. Now you are probably familiar with global graph state variables that you can set in project settings. The most common one being the shot variable which you can use to switch between shots. I have a scene here uh, with some shots set up and I'm currently in shot M30 and I click uh, my variables up here, switch to M20, switch to other shot. Uh, now I'm going to start off with some simple examples of how you can use variables and we're going to apply what we learn to this lighting scene. So for now we're just going to go over here. I have set up a teapot and I've branched off three different ways, setting my teapot to red, green, or blue. Now I'm going to put down a variable switch node. Call this BS underscore color. Set the variable name to be color. And I'm going to add in three patterns for my three different colors. So red, green, last but not least, blue. Connect these by using the tilde key. Previous node. And uh, my teapot has turned red. That is because uh, it will always default to the first input, so it's at zero. Uh, and you can see it flowing here. Um, if you can't see it like this, where you've got the dim node, and go to view dim nodes not contributing to the dim node, if you turn this off, all the nodes look the same. Turn it on. We can see which branch it's going to. It's extremely handy when you're using uh, variables to switch. Uh, now, I'm going to add in our uh, new variable into the global graph state variables up here variable rename it to color so add in our three colors red green blue and this has also added the variable to the top menu as well now you can see you can switch between them What you can also do is use a variable set node. I'm going to use a variable set node, set the color to be green. You here, this is overriding whatever we've got set in the global set. So local variables override global ones. Uh, now if I were to do another variable set node underneath this, switch it blue, do this, and you see it doesn't change. So what happens with variables is um, they go down up. So it's kind of the opposite to what you're used to for most things in the node graph. So it's set here, blue, then it goes up, green, carries on up and gets to this switch, that is when it changes. So um, as we can see here, changes to green, go here, it doesn't change back to blue. Um, and just to make sure there's no confusion, I'm just going to remove from the global graph state variables. I'm going to focus on ones for now. Okay, um, so if I were to turn this node off, you see now it does change to blue. This really demonstrates how local variables travel up the node graph. So this node is setting it to green and overriding the node lower down that was setting it to blue. And now we turn it off. Uh, now blue is the only one that's traveling up and it goes to the switch node and changes it to switch to blue. Another node is the variable delete node. I have to set this here. 
delete color now it goes back to our default red so you can see it goes up uh, gets to this point and gets deleted before it gets to our switch so now it doesn't uh doesn't anything set it's going back to first input okay uh, and then there is another node is the variable in a group the one of these colors here the yellow yellow add that node into a variable labeled group by doing the shift mouse click and drag variable labeled group yellow Hello. now for this uh, I'm going to do something a little bit different you notice it's called pattern both for the variable enabled group and the variable switch nodes so this doesn't have to just be a value it can be a pattern to resolve so first things first i'm going to use asterisks and see what happens when i do that uh, you'll see that my node now turns on because asterisk means you know anything so uh, this is now uh, true and then i'm going to do uh, minus red green blue so what is that doing? Uh, it's saying uh, it will be on unless the variable is set to red, green, or blue. Let's delete our variable delete node. And you see it's going to green and it's not activating this. Uh, so you can use these kind of uh, wild cards and uh, minuses uh, to make uh, a pattern that controls uh, your variable switches and your variable enabled groups. Uh, you can do a lot of different uh, things with this and i'll demonstrate that now in our actual scene so let's go here i have this uh volume set up here or applying a volume scene so it's just creating a volume box and giving it material and what i want to do is uh, i've got all of my render nodes here for my different passes so i've got uh, render node for all everything to render but with no volumes one for environment one for each of my characters one just for volumetrics and one everything with volumetric what i've done is in before each of these ones i've set variable set node calling it a variable uh, of render node and giving the value of what my pass would be so all no volume for example and this one environment character underscore jow so for each of my characters finding the fact that it's part of the character list giving it a character volume one volume and all with volume it's called volume now i've called this local variable render node but you can call it whatever you want uh, so long as you keep everything consistent and you know what your variable name is called you can call it at any point and set it to whatever value you want so what i can do is uh, have it so that my volume only comes on for these two uh, render nodes using my render node variable okay so see that in action first of all I'll place it here On. so what I want to do is place this inside a variable enabled group do the same thing again when I drop it in and graph up as well uh, so that's my uh, volume here we can see it now if I were to view any of my render nodes it wouldn't be active you have to set up the variable so over here, call this VEG uh, for the variable name. We're going to say render node. And 
for the pattern, we can do something like this, a star volume. So anything that has volume in the name for the render node, I'm active. Um, oh, hold on a minute. This is one that's got no volumes. So we don't want it to turn on here. So we'll take that one out. So we'll do star no volume. Okay, so now we don't have our volume for the no volume one. It won't be active for the environment. When we get to our volume metrics, it's on our volume in our uh, scene graph. So all the volumes are node on. Okay, uh, so pretty cool how we can do this. I just want to keep this node up. Going to add this node in this area because it is part of the scene setup. Now let's have a look at another example. So I have some lights in my scene, and I've got a specific light that just does a rim for our character gel. Okay. The gel. I have to place this rim light here into character. And you might have uh, a note that says, Can you uh, make it so that this rim light is added for these two shots and only for uh, when you're rendering the gel pass? So, how can you do that? Well, we're, again, we can use a variable enabled group. Use our pattern. So um, we can say, uh, oh, you know, uh, these are my shots. Uh, let's say, for example, I only need it in shot 1020 and 1030. So I can type those in. That comes on if it's one of those shots. Um, but this is now going to be on for every single one of my passes. So what I could do is inside my variable enabled group, make another variable enabled group and use a render node and just make it for those passes. But there's something else you can do, uh, which I think is quite elegant, is be able to access uh, all of your variables from one node. So how do you do that? As I uh, said before, you can use the star to mean everything. Now, uh, because this is a, a self statement, uh, you can use the same kind of uh, rules that you can do in a self statement that you would use for your scene graph locations. So we can um, do a bracket and at our variable, so dot, and we can use uh, regex and um, wiggly equals 1020 type 1030 so now we're using regex it's saying if it's either of these two shots then um, this would activate and i'll get my render node equal to character Okay, so this is now off. We can change it to uh, pass. Comes on. And just to show you my view before variable set, it's not there. Get to the variable on my uh, rim light here. Uh, now, um, also, if I were to switch shots and go to something that's not 10, let's go to 10.30 and show that it's, it's rated for 30 as well. And if I were to go to 10.40, this appears. Uh, so this gives you lots of control. You could do uh, multiple uh, variables that you're looking in your pattern, and you can 
uh, use the minuses and uh, or um, and just really combine lots of logic so you can switch things uh, on the fly and you can think of lots of different ways of using that to give you uh, loads of control in your scene.